Okay, um, maybe I'll start uh, while this is uh, waiting to boot up. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and uh, an honor to share the uh, stage with such a distinguished set of speakers. Um, so I'm going to focus my remarks on uh, some of the economic trouble spots in the world in the last few years, uh, which means I'll be talking about the United States and a bit about Europe. So uh, let's, I want to put this in context, a little bit of historic context, the remarks I'm going to make. Suppose we are gathered here four years ago, December 2007, and we were looking backward at that time, and we say, look, it looks as if the uh, rich countries in the world have largely outgrown uh, the susceptibility to major financial crises and uh, periods of extreme uncertainty. Yes, there had been a major banking crisis in Japan in the 1980s, and there are a handful of other rich countries that had experienced uh, banking crises in the 80s and 90s. A few European countries had uh, exchange rate crises in that time period. But by and large, the received wisdom as of 2007 um, is that the richer countries in the world had largely advanced beyond a period where they were susceptible to extreme waves of economic uncertainty and volatility, and that instead that was mainly a characteristic of emerging market and developing economies. So we now know that's not true. And so what I'd, what I'd like to do is, is share uh, a little bit of the research I've recently been doing, um, trying to understand uh, the sources of that uh, uncertainty and volatility, uh, in particular uh, in the United States. And I'm going to focus on one aspect of that, which is the role of uncertainty about economic policy and the role that policy plays in, in undermining uh, stability, if you want to put it that way, or generating economic uncertainty. So he here's an outline of, of my remarks. I'm going to start out with a bit of evidence that the large uh, volatility that we've seen in equity markets in the past few years is very much tied uh, to news about policy, okay? And then I will show you uh, a new index of economic policy uncertainty that I've developed with two economists at Stanford. Uh, and uh, I will drill into one component of that index and talk a bit about it in a bit of detail. And that's an index based on automated searches of text strings in newspaper articles, which I think is uh, more generally a useful way to take soft information about economic outlook or business conditions and try to turn it into hard information. So I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that. And then I will uh, show you a very preliminary version of a news-based index of economic policy uncertainty in China. Uh, and finally, uh, I'll just say a little bit about, um, show you a little bit of evidence that high levels of economic policy uncertainty foreshadow lower levels of output, employment, and investment in the future. So let me start with stock market volatility. Um, so many of you are familiar with this firsthand. Uh, there's been an extraordinary amount of, of equity market volatility around the world in the last few years, essentially since the financial crisis uh, began to unfold in a serious way uh, in the United States and Europe in late 2008. So what I've done in this, in this little chart is go back, or back to 1980 and identify every event in which the uh, stock market, as measured here by the S&P 500 index, moved up or down by more than 2.5% on a single day. Okay, so that's a very big daily move. Uh, there were you know, nearly 300 such events over the past 32 years, so, about, so roughly fewer than 10 events per year. Now, what I did next is go to uh, the New York Times, in this case, and there's invariably an article the next day that tries to identify the cause of this big stock market move. And usually the article will identify a single cause. Okay, so I've simply gone and read all, all of these and then placed it in certain categories, like it's news about the macroeconomy, it's news about earnings announcements, uh, there's some major terrorist event, or there's news about policy. Okay, so let me show you what, uh, highlight the role of policy here. So in the period from 1980 to 2007, 
there were 170 of these events, so roughly six a year. And fewer than one of these events per year, these big stock market movements, was associated with an announcement about economic policy. Okay, the con I want to contrast that to what's gone on in the last four years. Well, there's the story in the last four years. 119 such events, almost 30 per year in the last four years, and about a dozen events per year uh, were associated with, or in response to, announcements or concerns about economic policy. So two points so far. The last four years, the first one's not surprising and will be familiar to all of you who are, uh, ex who are working in the financial markets. An enormous increase in equity market volatility in the past four years relative to roughly the previous 30 years. Second point is a big, a big part of that increase in volatility, about 40%, is associated with the markets responding to news about economic policy. Okay? If you want to see the data laid out more fully, uh, that's done in this chart here. So this chart shows you year by year the frequency of these big movements in the stock market. Again, as measured by the return, the daily return on the S&P 500. And you can see that in certain years, in fact, often for years at a time, there's not a single move in the stock market of this size. But then there are clusters of other, other time periods, most dramatically in the last four years, in which the markets are extremely volatile. You can, and I've shown the positive increases above more than 2.5% gains on the above zero, and then declines of more than 2.5% below zero. The darker colored parts near the middle are the ones that are related to policy. So there again, you can see that there's both on the, on the upside and the downside, there's, a, there's much more market volatility in the past few years, and much of that is due to markets responding to developments related to economic policy. Okay? So that's some simple evidence uh, that suggests that much of the market volatility, at least, that we've seen in the past few years uh, is related to uncertainty about economic policy. So what I want to do next is say, well, okay, how can we move beyond that? Is there some way we can quantify the idea of economic policy uncertainty so that we can use it as a tool uh, for better understanding the role of economic policy uncertainty in driving economic fluctuations more generally and also for quantifying its impact? So <clears throat> let me tell you how my co-authors and I uh, are doing that currently. So we've constructed a new index of economic policy uncertainty, and it's built on four components. The most important component, as I alluded to earlier, is based on uh, counts of newspaper articles uh, that talk about the economy, uncertainty, and economic policy. Okay? That, that component gets one half of the weight, and in the interest of time, that's the only one I'm going to drill into in my remarks today. But there's other components as well that get a, a smaller weight. Now, here's our, here's our main index of U.S. economic policy uncertainty. So let's, let's take a look at that. It's a, it's a monthly index. It goes back to uh, 1985, January 1985, and, and currently we've updated it through October uh, 2011. Several things to note about this picture. First, there are, there's not surprisingly, there was a big increase in uncertainty about economic policy in the wake of the financial crisis that really erupted with full force uh, in late October, in, in late uh, 2008 and early 2009. So that's probably a case in which uncertainty about policy is really a response to other developments in the economy, namely the financial crisis. So again, this is a U.S. focused index. Um, <clears throat> but there are other episodes where it looks quite clear that the causality is running from the political system to uncertainty about uh, economic policy. So you can see that consequential presidential elections, like the first election of Bill Clinton, the first election of uh, George Bush, are associated with notable spikes uh, in this policy index. And more recently, in the last couple of years, you can see that there's high levels of this index the peak value of this entire time period in this index was July 2011. And if you follow U.S. politics, you'll know that there was a huge battle between the Democrats and the Republicans over whether to extend uh, the debt ceiling. 
and there was a, there were real concerns that the U.S. government uh, might partially shut down for a period of time, and this was a source of enormous disruption and uncertainty. Okay, so let me drill into the one component. Here's, here's the news-based component of that index I just showed you. So this piece gets a weight of one half, and it's basically constructed as follows. Can use Google News to, to perform automated searches of articles and count the number of articles that talk about the economy, that talk, characterize the economy as being uncertain, and to talk about economic policy. It's got to do all three of those things to make it into our account. And then we, so we simply count the articles in, in Google News uh, that talk about this, and then we have to scale it some way because the scope of Google News has expanded. So we basic, here we basically scaled it by um, the number of articles that have the word today. So that's just a simple scaling device. Now, you might be saying to yourself, okay, well this sounds sort of different, but is this really a sensible way to try to measure uncertainty uh, in the economy or uncertainty about policy. So we've done a number of validation exercises. Let me just show you one. So again, many of you will be familiar with the VIX index. If you're not familiar with VIX, it's a, uh, it's a market-based measure of uncertainty about future movements in equity returns. Okay, so here I've taken uh, a US-based VIX measure um, and I've compared that, not to the index I showed you before, but to a news-based index of equity market uncertainty, constructed in the same way as I described before. So why do this? Well, because we know what the VIX is measuring. And so what I want to see is, does my news-based approach to measuring uncertainty generate something that looks like the VIX? Because I know what the VIX is. And the answer is, when you look at this picture, yes, they line up remarkably closely. The main difference is that the tails in the news-based index are somewhat fatter. But other than that, almost all of the major movements in the VIX are associated with movements in this um, news-based approach as well. So let me, let me uh, proceed, and, and I, I think some of you in the back won't be able to read this table, so I'll tell you uh, what the main points are. One of the nice things about a news-based index is you can drill down deeper, and you can say, okay, I've got a collection of articles, hundreds or thousands of articles that talk about economic policy uncertainty. But can I learn from those articles what the main concerns were of the people writing those articles about the particular sources of economic uncertainty? So that's what we did. And we did that by time period as well. So let me tell you a little bit about what we found. Everything in this table is scaled to the average value of our economic policy uncertainty index over the whole roughly 30-year period, or 25-year period, 26-year period over which we construct the index. So that's reflected here in this number of 100. So everything's scaled that way. Now, we also constructed an index of just economic uncertainty, not about pol economic policy uncertainty, but economic uncertainty more generally. That value's got 181, and what that says is that the number of articles in Google News that are talking about economic uncertainty in general is about 80% larger than the number that are talking about economic policy uncertainty. So <clears throat> there's a number, you can look at this and, you can, and it tells you a number of other sensible things. So I've just picked out the role of uncertainty, policy related concerns about national security in the last few, in the, in the few years following the 9-11 attack. And not surprisingly, in fact reassuringly, this index says the single biggest source of economic policy uncertainty in the aftermath of 9-11 had to do with national security concerns. Okay, that's what this is telling you. Now, what about the last two years? Okay, very high levels of economic policy uncertainty. That's what I showed you earlier. Um, what does our analysis say was underlying that and how big was it? Well, I've highlighted two entries uh, in, this, uh, in this slide. First, at the top, you can see the red arrows pointing to a number that's about 340. What does that mean? It means that in the past two years, the level of economic policy uncertainty is about three and a half times as large as the average level over this whole 26-year period. And the arrow at the bottom is telling you that in the last two years, 77% of all the articles that are about economic uncertainty are also about policy uncertainty, suggesting policy uncertainty is a key uh, source of overall economic uncertainty in the economy. 
So, if I drill down further, what are the main sources of economic policy uncertainty? Well, they're overwhelmingly, in the last two years in the United States, reflecting concerns about two issues, monetary policy and tax policy. Those are, those are far and away the biggest uh, sources of economic uncertainty in the U.S. economy in the past two years. But if I look at these other categories, I can see that basically most of the categories that we've identified, concerns about health care regulation, uh, labor market regulation, uh, sovereign debt issues, they are all, almost all, not all of them, but almost all of them are at elevated levels uh, in the past two years. So this both confirms a sense that I think many people had, that the policy environment in the United States has been um, highly volatile, highly uncertain in the past two years, um, well after the end of the financial crisis in some sense, but also tells you about the particular sources uh, of that uncertainty. And I want to contrast that to the situation in the first 15 years of our sample. Uh, and notice the low levels of economic policy uncertainty according to our analysis in the first 15 years. Those numbers are like, are about one-fifth to one-tenth the level of what they've been the last two years. So according to our analysis, the last two years it really is quite extraordinary in the level of economic policy uncertainty that businesses and households have had to contend with uh, in the U.S. economy. Now, it's probably occurred to you that this technology that I'm using, look, count news automated string, uh, text string searches on newspapers, could be applied more broadly. And indeed, I think it could. I think, it, as I said earlier, I think it's a potentially quite useful way to try to convert soft information about business conditions and the economic outlook into hard information. So I'm. I'm in the very early stages with a uh, Chinese graduate student in constructing a uh, news-based uh, index of economic policy uncertainty for China. Uh, and this is our very first uh, pass, uh, just put together really in the last week. So do, don't take this one to the bank yet. Uh, there's lots more work to do before we're confident that we've got it right. But we're here again, we're going to uh, Google News. We're in the process of trying to go to local regional newspapers. Um, but that's a, a much more labor-intensive approach because you have to do them one at a time. Um, and you can see, for example, uh, November 2010, concerns about inflation. Uh, there was a, a, a lot of attention to rural land reforms in China in late 2008. Uh, this uh, second big spike you see right here, uh, most of the articles are talking about uh, pressures for uh, uh, appreciation of the yuan. So I think this method I've described could be applied much more broadly, and uh, we're very much in the, in the process of doing that. So last, last thing, let me just end with um, some initial efforts to turn from measuring economic policy uncertainty to trying to quantify its impact uh, on the macroeconomy, or at least if not, if you, if you want to step back from a causal interpretation, at least assess what we should anticipate in the wake of high levels of economic policy uncertainty. So I've taken, I won't describe all the details here, but I've taken a fairly standard statistical approach used by macroeconomists in order to try to isolate the uh, effect or the predictive power of one particular variable among many others and see what it foreshadows about the future evolution uh, of macroeconomic variables that we care about. So what I've done in particular is, let's suppose we consider the size of a shock to economic policy uncertainty equivalent to what happened in the United States from 2006 to 2011 as measured by our index. What, would that, uh, what does that predict about the future evolution in this chart of industrial production activity and employment. So it, what it says is that a shock of that size foreshadows a decline in industrial production of about 4% over the next 18 to 24 months, and a decline in employment of 2 to 2.5 two million, uh, peaking a little bit later. And those are big numbers. They're not enormous numbers. But what they say is that if the United States were successful in moving to a more stable policy regime, 
that that would become a significant factor uh, in, in, in increasing or improving the recovery uh, from the economic downturn in 2008 and 2009, which as you know has still been uh, quite weak. So if you're interested in, um, in this topic, um, uh, my co-authors and I have written a few popular pieces uh, as well as the last entry on this slide is the underlying academic paper. Um, you can find all of these things or links to them uh, on my website. <coughs> Thanks. <laughs>